Hello, and thank you for joining us on Searching for Answers. We're still searching for the truth, and we're in the Book of Acts. And I don't always agree with my colleagues, but they don't agree with me, so mm -hmm. it's four against one. But I'm sticking to what I believe. And in the meantime, we're having a wonderful discussion about what went on in the time of Jesus when he was crucified and then his disciples rallied round and they had a group that came together and they sold their belongings, their houses, and laid the uh, prophets at the feet of the apostles. So then they were all of one accord and helped each other. It's a beautiful story. So if you gather your Bibles and go to the book of Acts chapter 6, beginning with verse 1. My name is Carolyn Thompson, and on my right is... Um, I'm the agreeable uh, Gerald Winslow <laughs> from the University Medical Center. <laughs> and John Jones, La Sierra University. John Brunt, the Azure Hills Church. And I'm the provocative Richard Rice from <laughs> the Loma Linda University School of Religion. All right, John Jones, you want to begin reading, please? Well, <clears throat> we're looking at the Acts of the Apostles, and I think we're about into chapter 6 now. Mm -hmm. Another fascinating and very lively, but in some ways heartbreaking story as well. This is the New American Standard th this evening, which I brought only because it happens to be the physically smallest Bible I own, and it takes up less space on the table. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't compete with others. So here we are. Chapter 6, verse 1. Now at this time, while the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint rose on the part of the Hellenistic Jews against the native Hebrews. We need to recognize who these people are, if I may bracket this right now and pause. The fact is these are both Christians. These are Christian groups. Mm -hmm. yeah? mm -hmm. They are Jewish Christian groups. Mm -hmm. But they are the hometown folks on the one hand, called the native Hebrews, and people in the scattered Jewish communities and population throughout the Mediterranean world and beyond, uh, called the diaspora, the spread of, the Judy, of Judaism, um, who have come to visit the temple in Jerusalem at time of Passover, but they are nonetheless Christians. They still come. Maybe they're new Christians, just converted. But there is already some tension within Judaism between these two groups, and that tension apparently carries over into the Jewish Christian communities as well. So here we go. Um, because the, their widows were being overlooked in the daily serving of the food. In other words, there's a bit of a, of a social uh, support system here. Uh, the twelve summoned the congregation of the disciples and said, it's not desirable for us to neglect the word of God in order to serve tables. Hmm? Therefore, brethren, select from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the spirit of wisdom, whom we may put in charge of this task. But we, we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Hmm. The statement, verse 5, found approval with the whole congregation, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch. These are people from outside. And these they brought before the apostles, and after praying, they laid their hands on them, and the word of God kept on spreading, and the number of the disciples continued to increase greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests now were becoming obedient to the faith. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. I'd like to read those uh, verses mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. the New International mm -hmm. Version. Good. Uh, chapter 6, beginning with verse 1. In those days when the number of disciples were increasing, the Grecian Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, it would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the Word of God in order to wait on tables. Mm. Can you believe that? Mm, yes. Brothers, <laughs> choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the Spirit and wisdom. We will turn this responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the Word. This proposal pleased the whole group. 
they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. Also Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas from Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these men to the apostles who prayed and laid their hands on them. Mm. So the word of God spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem increased rapidly, and a large number of priests became obedient mm. to the faith. Can I ask a question of our New Testament scholars? No. This has just occurred yes. to me. <laughs> I'm teasing no. you. I'm teasing well, can you. I ask it anyway? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> These okay. names, at least the first two, look Greek to me. Yeah, mm -hmm. they? they are. Stephen, yeah. it's almost like saying, mm -hmm. let's <laughs> let's get the Greek I representation. I told you about that at the beginning. Remember, yeah. the Greek <laughs> Jews were coming from other places. They had forgot the Aramaic and the Jews locally spoke Aramaic. And so when these Greek Jews came in, they didn't think of them as being quite as good as the local Jews who spoke Aramaic. Hence, you have a little problem. Well, it's almost like they, what would you call this? Uh, a little spat. Minority representation. Yes. In other words, mm -hmm. we've got the leadership here, mm -hmm. clearly Palestinian in origin, and so now we're yeah. we're sort of you got it. enhancing, <coughs> expanding the leaders to include people of 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 uh, what yes. would you call it? And they Greek are precisely origin, of the same can, ethnic group or cultural group yeah. as those who need to be looked out that's, for. That's what I mean. Yeah. Well, well, that, they can take care of this problem. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. that's okay. You got Thank it. you very and, much. And you know, this, my question is answered. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this problem may be bigger than what we we might think of from the wording here, yeah. because it has food in here. And then it talks about, you know, the service of tables. We're not waiting on wait tables. Wait on tables instead of the service of the word. We, we think of just a dinner table, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But remember that they were coming and sharing all of their goods. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, and it's, so it was not necessarily just food, but it was mm, this see. whole matter of distributing, uh, you know, the resources, what, of, the the resources community. Yeah. of the whole mm -hmm. community <clears throat> yeah. to each other. And even back then, the word table could mean more than just a table that you put mm -hmm. food on. Mm -hmm. It was often the table where you did financial dealing. Mm -hmm. And oh, uh, in fact, the word here, it, it's an interesting word. It's the word from which we get the word trapeze. But mm -hmm. So it's really nothing like that. But if you go to Greece <laughs> today. You have the money today. You yeah, have to be a trapeze. trapeze artist. <laughs> artist. <All right. laughs> Too many are. <laughs> but the word table was trapeza. Mm -hmm. And if you go to Greece today, you'll see that word all over the place. It's what they use mm -hmm. for bank. Mm. And oh, so right. when you see that word, why, that's a bank. Mm. And so it's, I think it was a bigger thing going yeah. on sure. than just the food distribution. It was a matter of the whole financial yeah. uh, distribution of this sure. community property that people came So they gave. needed some good <coughs> administrators. <laughs> uh, no, right. I'm looking at three mm -hmm. colleagues here, Carolyn, yes. who have all been administrators. That's I right. never have. I see. I've devoted myself to the ministry <laughs> of the word. Yes. <laughs> and prayer. And, and prayer. prayer. And you didn't wait on tables. <laughs> no? These guys did. In, in the expansive sense of the word. <laughs> well, the first I'm thing. Making it possible for people I know. <laughs> the first thing the administrators want to say is we also devoted a lot of time to prayer because okay. we, you, you <laughs> often didn't know what I'm, we were I'm doing. Delighted <laughs> you were called to that service. Well, <laughs> it, it's, but this gets right at the heart of one of the key, chief problems that any administrator has, and that is basic fairness. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's, it's the question that philosophers would call distributive justice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who bears the burdens? Who reaps the benefits? Mm -hmm. Now, in this case, they've raised the stakes considerably because if you've given everything you own <laughs> into the common <laughs> treasury, you sold your house and so forth, you're pretty abjectly dependent then on the distribution you get back. You can't just kind of, in fact, we had this rather sad story of some people who were holding mm -hmm. something That's back. Right. They were going to reap the benefits while they had uh, uh, you know, some pity back. for themselves. So they get the, the benefits of, uh, of the common good while they have uh, an insurance plan for themselves. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm guessing these other people didn't. Mm -hmm. So now they're very mm -hmm. dependent on, and so it's, as you say, John, it's not just who's first in line at the church potluck. That's right. 
it's really how you're going to fare in, in this life. This is a big deal. Mm -hmm. And for all administrators, I don't care who you are, you always have that question. Sometimes when you're an administrator, you feel like you're dealing entirely with, <laughs> forgive me, but with petulant children who say, but she got more than there, he got more, <laughs> than, they got more than we did. And, um, and you're constantly on, on trial, so to speak, for mm -hmm. fairness. Well, it was, I, for 12 years, I had 23 departments that mm -hmm. reported to me. And, they and it was always amazing yeah. to me that every single one of them knew yeah. that they had been shortchanged yeah. in the distribution <laughs> of the budget. And right. probably all 23 <laughs> had been. Because <Yeah. laughs> you were you pocketing said, it. Yeah. <laughs> and you said, but that's my job. <laughs> <laughs> well, there okay. are precedents uh, that John work Joe. beneath the surface here that, that are lurking behind mm -hmm. all of this. Fact is that the folks at home in the homeland generally did suffer. They were poor. Mm -hmm. One of the nicknames for them in, the, in uh, Aramaic was Evionim, the poor ones. Mm. The reason that Judaism has scattered throughout the Mediterranean is precisely economic. It is the people in Tarsus where Saul was born, for example, and elsewhere, who could make some money. And so part of the whole thing about coming, even as Jews, quite before Christianity, to, to visit at the, f at the time of the feasts was, was not only to pray in the temple, but to bring support to the aunties and uncles back home. Mm. Now, that we see already uh, later at work in Paul when he, he takes up collections from people who really are Gentiles, but still um, he knows that he can ameliorate the uh, resistance to that if he brings gifts from them. Therefore, there's already a certain dynamic. You speak of uh, distributive justice. Mm -hmm. The question then arises, who has the greatest need? Mm -hmm. And it was self-evident, I think, to those who were running the shop there, even in Christian circles in Jerusalem, the greatest need is those of us who are the native Hebraic mm. uh, Christians mm -hmm. rather than the diaspora, the scattered mm -hmm. uh, Christians from outside. They have resources we don't have. Mm. So already the dynamic is at work beneath the surface. Just presuppose that's how we do it, you know? And so it's quite easy to understand how this whole thing would kind of blow up in their faces at some point. Now these people who get chosen, we've sometimes called them deacons, although as we pointed mm. out, the text doesn't actually call them technically deacons. Mm -hmm. It uses the word for service, service which, which is, is related to the word right. deacon. Uh, they must have been trusted, and I have two or three questions that just come to mind. One, you pointed out already, some of them seem to have Greek names. So uh -huh. that helps in a way with the trust, doesn't it? Because if you just named all from one group or the other, you'd have a, a problem. No distribution without representation. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but the last one named a convert to Judaism, does yes. that mean he was... First of he, all, this, a Gentile. He was a he was firstly a, a Gentile. Gentile yeah. mm -hmm. is this, as far as I know, this is the first evidence we have of someone who was once a Gentile. Do we have any other that where another Gentile has come in, or is this? But don't you think he had become a Jew? Yeah. Oh, he become a Jew. Yeah, he's no become a Jew. So he's viewed so as a Jew. Jew he's viewed okay. as a Jew. Yeah. Right. So, so he would have probably. I mean, to be a convert to Judaism, he would have been circumcised and mm -hmm. you okay. know really become a Jew. Rick. Would you begin with verse 8, please, in chapter 6 of the book of Acts. Stephen, full of grace and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Then some of those who had belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, Cyrenians, Alexandrians, and others of those from Cilicia and Asia, stood up and argued with Stephen. But they could not withstand the wisdom and the spirit with which he spoke. I want to ask you something. Who are the freedmen? Freedmen are former slaves. That's and my understanding well, that of it. Figures, okay, mm -hmm. yeah. all right. And uh, they, were, they were in the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. Just loads of freedmen because there was a lot of freeing of slaves. Mm -hmm. um, people were, could buy, uh, many people could buy their own freedom. A lot of people released their slaves in their wills when they died. And so they became a, a fairly significant force in the whole Roman Empire. And uh, so various these, emperors would try to deal with that these, force. These uh, men that are uh, named then, are they part of the freedmen? 
when it said uh, mm. Jews of Cyrene and Alexandria, Jews of Cyrene, and as well as the provinces of Cilicia and Asia. These men began to argue with Ste Stephen, Stephen, but they could not stand up against his wisdom or the spirit by whom he spoke. Mm -hmm. Are you so. saying, Rick, that these men were freedmen that you named? I don't know. It looks like, I mean, it, it, it doesn't seem to name the freedmen. It, it just says this is. I, it looks to me like that's one group, and then you have the Cyrenians and Alexandrians. Okay. And in other words, these would be uh, Jews who had come to. I think it's inclusive. You think it's inclusive? I think so. so uh, in other words, the freedmen, and now we're referring to a group of freedmen, yeah. the Cyrenians. Yeah. Cyrenians and other. I guess yeah. it could go either now, I don't know that right. the okay. membership that you that you had to be a freedman in order to be a member of that synagogue, mm -hmm. but the oh, implication okay. probably mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. But are you saying that Friedman includes the Cyrenians yeah. and Alexander? Mm -hmm. yeah, I think so. Yeah. They're they're all all Asia. But it's, it's interesting mm -hmm. to, to note that there were Jews all over yeah. the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. And I, I've even heard the statistic that, uh, uh, that as many as, as much as 20% of the population of Alexandria was yeah. Jewish yeah. around this time. Does that fit what you're understanding? And, that was, and some of those Jews would have been slaves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Slaves yeah. of Gentiles. Okay, right. you want to continue sure. on, Rick? Okay, um, then, verse 11, they secretly instigated some men to say, we have heard him, that would be Stephen, speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. They stirred up the people as well as the elders and the scribes. Then they suddenly confronted him, seized him, and brought him before the council. They set up false witnesses who said, this man never stops saying things against this holy place in the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and will change the customs that Moses handed on to us. And all who sat in the council looked intently at him, and they saw that his face was like the face of an angel. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. It is yes. interesting. These people, to the extent that they may indeed have been slaves, mm -hmm. may not have been able to practice their religion mm -hmm. until liberated through one circumstance or another. Now they are really staunch believers in their Judaism mm -hmm. because it is their very meaning. It's their liberation. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's not a constricting thing for them. It is what they want to defend with all their hearts. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they're going to go after any Christians that they can. Mm -hmm. There's some psychology of the new convert in a way. So does, they're not converts, but you understand. Is there, is there anything sort of intrinsically in, in Christianity that, that sort of explodes some of the categories of Judaism? Or was this just a trumped up charge that just said, you know, they're <laughs> sort of taking away the sacredness of the, the temple here and so on. It looks like well, the temple know, and the customs and Moses and so on, because we really know things tended to change. Yeah, I, wonder if, I wonder if Luke is setting the stage for the controversy that's about to follow. Uh, sure, because remember the temple was not just the religious center there in Jerusalem. It was the economic center mm -hmm. in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. it, it, the, the economy pretty well was dependent on the temple and all those people who came in uh, with the, their tourist money, their mm -hmm. contributions <laughs> to the temple, their animals that they would buy for sacrifice. They had to change the currency, currency. and there was That's always right. a chance to make money there. That's right. So there's, mm -hmm. there's all kinds of ways that these people, the Sadducees <laughs> and the, the people who were centered around the temple, made money off of the temple. Yeah. And you look at the, some of the homes that have been excavated in Jerusalem mm -hmm. that kind of look down over the temple. They're magnificent, beautiful mm -hmm. homes that uh, some of these people had. So the temple is not just a religious thing. It is really the it was source the center of, of their, their power and mm -hmm. their status and their money. Yes. And it does seem when mm. we get later on into chapter 7 mm. and Stephen makes his speech mm. that what they accuse him of, of relativizing the temple, yeah. is true. Mm. I mean, because he does. And you notice, when, well, we'll notice when we go through the speech in chapter 7, it's a long speech. But when they actually decide to stone him is when he gets to that point mm. yes. of mm. talking about the temple. Mm -hmm. mm. And it's it's 
those words about the temple that become the real threat, and it's at that point that they decide to stone him. Okay, who wants to read uh, chapter 7, beginning with verse 1? Go ahead. I Maybe. Lost my voice. Oh, okay. <laughs> let, let me just say one more thing. We, this is anticipating, but, okay. in, in, you know, for, for what I just said about the mm -hmm. temple, verse 48. Verse 48. Of, of chapter 7, which we will get to in this speech. But as we go through the speech, that's the point where Stephen mm -hmm. says, mm -hmm. the Most mm -hmm. High does not live in houses mm -hmm. made by men. Mm -hmm. Heaven is my throne mm -hmm. and the earth is my footstool. Mm -hmm. And it's after that that they stone him. So, yeah, so that makes your point. Yeah. yeah. Now Paul uses these same words mm -hmm. in Acts 17. That's when right. He talks to the, I've always thought there he's referring to the Parthenon and not, mm -hmm. to, you know, yeah. not the temple in Jerusalem. Oh, that's remarkable. John, you want to read? Well, please? yes. We'll just take a little bit here and see how far we get and give ourselves some time to uh, discuss yeah. it. Uh, chapter 7, verse 1. The high priest said, um, Are these things so? And he said, Hear me, brethren and fathers. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia, before he lived in Haran. Yeah? And he said to him, Leave your country and your relatives and come into the land that I will show you. Then he left the land of the Chaldeans and settled in Haran. And from there, after his father died, God had him moved to this country in which you are now living. Notice the second person plural, not mm -hmm. we. You, mm -hmm. you guys are kind of feeling there. Yeah. Um, but he gave him no inheritance in it, not even a foot of ground, and yet even when he had no child, he promised that he would give it to him as a possession and to his descendants after him. Verse 6, but God spoke to this effect, that his descendants would be aliens in a foreign land and that they would be enslaved and mistreated for 400 years. And whatever nation to which they will be in bondage, I myself will judge, said God. And after that, they will come out and serve me in this place. In other words, he's aligning himself with their common shared history. Mm -hmm. yep. Verse 8, he gave him the covenant of circumcision. And so Abraham became the father of Isaac, circumcised him on the eighth day. Isaac became the father of Jacob, Jacob of the 12 patriarchs. Patriarchs became jealous of Joseph, sold him into Egypt, yet God was with him and rescued him from all his afflictions, granted him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and made him governor over Egypt and all his households. Okay, just yeah. pause just a minute. Mm -hmm. Why did uh, Abraham wait until the eighth day to circumcise Isaac? That that established the custom, which was followed from Besides then on. Besides the custom, there's another that, medical reason. Well, that's where I'm headed. Okay. That not really for Isaac's sake, but for all Jewish boys, they are able to sustain the operation at, after the elapse of a week after they are born, without uh, risk so much risk of infection. Well, the the reason that they're supposed to wait, and they don't do it in this day and age, mm -hmm. is because the blood clots better mm -hmm. when the child is at eight days. Yeah. Which I found, I've never forgotten that. Which I find, that's amazing, because you never hear anybody talk about that. But it's a, it's a safer way to do it because mm -hmm. of the clotting of the blood. I did okay. Not know that. Yeah, so you see the story. And, uh, you know, he continues, and we, we're not going to get down through all of this today. But it's clear that Stephen is deliberately aligning himself with the stories of the fathers as mm -hmm. they've been passed on mm -hmm. in some detail. He's making it clear, you know, I know as much about this as you folks do because it's my story too. Despite the fact that he uses the second person plural, you all. Nonetheless, mm -hmm. the roots are there. You just answered the question I was going to ask, and that is, what is Stephen doing here? You know, I mean, this is a... Oh, yeah. Oh. Is one, I, I think this is one of the longest speeches in the Bible. Yeah. Unless you count yeah. yeah. the whole book of Deuteronomy as one speech. <laughs> this is a long one, but it seems like he's, he's answering the charge yeah. that you are departing from our tradition mm -hmm. by showing that, I mean, from, you know, from the ground up, we're on the same page here. Yeah. Yeah. So that he can argue that the, you know, what what he wants to what, what these Christians are saying about Jesus is not at all 
a departure from what we've all believed, but rather the culmination of it. Is, is that That's exactly is so. my That's suspicion? Right. That's right where he's headed. Confirmed? Mm -hmm. Okay. Is he kind of rehearsing the history of the uh, whole history of Israel? Yeah, I think. Right really, mm -hmm. I thought Let's so too. It's fantastic. Now, it is not the case that Christians were the only ones who called into question legitimacy, legitimacy of the temple. The Essenes did the same thing. They're mm -hmm. out in the desert precisely because they're saying a plague on all of you, you know, mm -hmm. all of the parties. We're going to start over out here. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. temple is corrupt, so are the priests. We're not going to have anything to do with it. Right. So this was not an absolutely unique voice. But the problem is the Essenes are out in the desert and the Christians are here in Solomon's portico. Uh -huh. you know, <laughs> the uh -huh. Well, they told them to go, right? Go. Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, <coughs> excuse me. I, sorry I lost my voice That's earlier. That's all right. I think it's coming back. We Not just assumed you were choked up with emotion. <laughs> <laughs> story. We knew it wasn't because you had nothing to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. Never fear. A little over um, a minute. Well, it just shows. I mean, the, this, this is a sad story, and it will have a sad ending yes, that's leading it up. But it, it shows how <coughs> sometimes, and, and you pointed to this, Rick, sometimes people, when they're very emotionally attached to a religious conviction, can become quite violent if you, if you mess with that, mm -hmm. which is the dark side of religion that's sometimes. Right. Yep, right. well said. Mm -hmm. Many things have been done in the name of religion, unfortunately. Well, I think uh, we're in chapter 7, and we're about to close. We only have a few more seconds. But I think that Stephen's speech is so wonderful. If you read it carefully and go to Acts of the Apostles by Ellen White, and she enlarges upon that, and it's a wonderful th speech that he get, gave as he was led by the Holy Spirit. Unfortunately, the outcome was not a good one, but he had his eyes on heaven and Jesus as he looked up and saw what was going on mm -hmm. that uh, so encouraging. And now this is Carolyn Thompson for Searching for Answers. <laughs>